Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning, God. That word God there in the Hebrew language is the word Elohim. His name is Elohim. You may be seated in the presence of our life-changing King, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And the pre-existence of Jesus Christ, hallelujah, is evidence here in the very first line of the very first scripture of the very first book of the Bible. Hallelujah. His name is Elohim. Amen. El, amen. The prefix El, amen. My daughter, she's majoring in Spanish. She can confirm this. The prefix El, hallelujah, it means strong and mighty. Amen. God is strong and mighty. The first part of his name is El. The last part of his name is I am. Amen. Hallelujah. And the thing about I am, the I am in the Hebrew language is just like the S in the English language. If it ends in I am, it's plural. So the Bible says in the beginning, the strong and mighty God, plural, created heaven and earth. Now somebody saying, well, pastor, I thought the Bible said this, the Shemach of Israel, the Lord thy God is one. He is one. But he's one with three components. He's the three in one God. See, somebody else is saying, well, pastor, the Bible never says Trinity in the Bible. It does not say it, but it displays it from the very beginning he's the strong and mighty god of plurality in the beginning god created amen a god that created everything hallelujah including the god that created me and you made us in his image in his likeness he said let us let us let us make man in our image he wasn't talking to the angels Amen. he wasn't talking to anybody other than having a conference call with himself and said let us make man in our image the same way we're spirit hallelujah we're gonna make man a spirit the same way we are three in one we're gonna make man three in one the same way we're father word holy ghost we're gonna make man spirit soul body hallelujah as a matter of fact we'll create the whole world in 3d amen hallelujah we'll make everything spirit soul body height with depth past present future ice water steam gas liquid solid sky land sea heaven earth hell everything that god created he created it three in one why because he's three in one amen Hallelujah. And see, if I'm going to have a right perspective of who Jesus is to me, I've got to receive him as part of the Trinity or the three in one God. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, it says this. For the Word of God is quick amen i've told you this before the word here quick is not fast amen the word quick is alive and personified he's alive the word of god is a living entity the word of god is a living being hallelujah the word of god is quick alive personified and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart and the next verse says neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight whose sight the word of god the alive and personified powerful word of god hallelujah is his sight in which everything is manifest 
but all things are naked and open unto him who the word with whom we have to do John's gospel chapter 1 verse 1 says in the beginning was the word the word was with God and the word was God and the same was in the beginning with God and all things that were made by him God the word all things were made by him God the word and without him God the word was not anything made that was made our faith is based on the fact that the word is no less God than the Father is. Amen? Amen. You know the saying, how's the saying go? A man is no better than his word. If God said something and his word does not come to pass, he's not God. So the word is as much God as the father that spoke the word is God. You can't separate the two because his word is him and he is his word. And if his word fails, then he fails. And if he, if he fails, then his word won't come to pass. You can't separate the Father from the Word. Well, what about the Holy Ghost, preacher? The Holy Spirit is the power of God personified. Some places calls the Holy Spirit a it. Hallelujah. But the Holy Spirit is a him. Hallelujah. And if he, the power of God, cannot do everything that the Word of God says, that the the Father God can do, then the Spirit of God is not God. Therefore, God is not God. You can't separate the three. Our faith is based on the fact that God is the three in one God. Who do you say Jesus is? He's the second person of the trinity or the second person of the godhead as the bible describes it hallelujah and therefore he's part of the three in one god and if my faith is based on anything less than the three in one god then my faith is designed to fail hallelujah and my picture of god is faulty because he is the Father that's seated in heaven. He is the Word that, prof that progressed and came from the Father's mouth. He is the power, the Holy Spirit, that brings that Word to pass. He is Elohim. Genesis chapter 1 says, In the beginning, God Elohim created the heavens and the earth. So Elohim is the God of creation. Amen. He's the God of creation. Amen. Hallelujah. See, I know that I'm not talking to people that need to hear this, but we never know who's listening to this. God created everything. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. There was no big bang. There was no sludge that climbed up out of the water that dripped off the once frozen. Well, it takes more faith to believe that stuff than it does to believe that God created everything. And see, the importance of believing in a God of creation, amen, hallelujah. If you don't believe that you were created, then you can't believe that you were created with a purpose. 
And see, if we don't know that God is the God of creation who creates us with the purpose, then they have no purpose. See, the reason that the suicide rate is so high, the reason it's so easy for somebody to pull a trigger and kill somebody is because many people don't believe that they have a purpose. Without a purpose, you don't believe you have value. Without value, you don't believe you have worth. And see, many people don't think and don't know that all of their self-loathing is tied to the fact that they don't have faith in the God of creation. It says, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. It says later in the next chapter that he created everything in heaven and in earth. He created everything in heaven and in earth in the first six days. And then he made man. Why? Because he made everything that he made in the first six days in heaven and earth for man. He's the God of creation. How did he create everything? In Genesis chapter 1 verse 2, it shows us that too. It says, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said. The Father spoke, the Word came alive, and the Spirit brought everything that was spoken to pass and that's how God created everything he's the God of creation the God of creation is also the God of separation in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth the earth was without form and void And darkness was up on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And the Bible says he then separated the light from the darkness. See, the God of creation is also the God of separation. Because as the God of creation who creates things with a purpose, he's the God of separation that separates that some things are good and some things are bad. Some things are right for you. Some things are wrong for you. Some things are healthy. Some things are not. Some things are good. Some things are evil. And if you go walk according to the purpose that I created you for, hallelujah, if you go walk in your creation purpose, you've got to walk in the separation of what I've said because some things are light and some things are dark and you can't walk in the light if you're hanging around the dark. The God of creation is also the God of separation. There is a such thing as right and wrong. The Bible says this. The Bible says that people, the natural tendency that people have is to do what's right in their own eyes. In other words, this is what is right for me right now. This is what feels good to me right now. This is what seems good to me right now. But if I don't have an ultimate line that dif differentiates right from wrong, good from evil, then I find myself not knowing where to go or how to follow my path of the purpose I was created for. The whole thing of the knowledge of good and evil Good and evil, how can something be good and evil at the same time? It's either good or evil. But if I haven't separated good from evil, 
then I'll look at something that looks good, feels good, seems good, smells good, feels good, and I'll think it must not, it must be good. No, the end result of it, if it's evil, even if it looks good, feels good, seems good, smells good, then it's evil. If you put cyanide in red Kool-Aid, red Kool-Aid in and of itself tastes good. Looks good as you stir it up and you see the sugar down at the bottom of the container just coming up a little bit. <laughs> but once you put the poison in the Kool-Aid, it's no longer good. It's not good and evil. All it is is evil. And if you don't separate good from evil, you'll be deceived by the things that seem both good and evil. And you'll think that they're good when they're really evil and they're taking you away from your creation purpose because you did not allow there to be a separation of right from wrong, good from evil, holy from unholy, you got to make the separation. That's why God created the light and separated the light from the dark. He's the God of creation. He creates things with a purpose. He's the God of separation. Hallelujah. So that you can see your purpose. My Bible says God can see in the dark. So why is it that he made the light in the first place? So he could see? No, he says but he, everything is naked and open before the eyes of him with whom we have to do. He can see in the dark. So he made the light so that we could see. And he separated the light from the dark for you and for me so that we could see how to walk in our purpose that he created it for us for the God of creation is the God of separation amen amen some things you have to separate yourself from some people you have to separate yourself from and as much as it hurts sometimes because they're people that you have a good relationship they're people that make you feel good there are people who may even have been good to you in the past. But if there's a, not a separation from people who will ultimately lead to your evil, your demise, your downfall, or even your staying stagnant right where you are, if there's not a separation, you'll never walk in the purpose of your creation. He's the God of creation. He's the God of separation. And he's the God of designation. All this we learn in the name Elohim. The three in one God. Who created time, past, present, future. Who created space, height, width, depth. Who created elements, solid liquid vapor who created us spirit soul body who created everything with a purpose for the purpose of the creation and the separation revealing our designation genesis chapter 1 verse 26 once you get there let me hear you say Hallelujah, I'm there. Hallelujah, I'm there as well. It says this. And God said, let us, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, and in the image of God created he him. Male and female, women, you are included in this too, created he them. And God blessed 
them. Tell somebody, you already blessed. Hallelujah. God blessed them and said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. The God of creation and the God of separation is also the God of designation. And what he did is designate that me and you would have Dominion, be fruitful, multiply, and replenish. He ordained before we even knew our name that we were supposed to be fruitful, multiply, replenish, and subdue. God created you with the purpose of of blessing you to hallelujah be fruitful multiply replenish and subdue and have dominion and if i'm gonna have a right revelation of who jesus is in my life hallelujah it's gonna require that i know what he wants for me he wants the best for me he wants to bless me hallelujah so that i'm fruitful i multiply i replenish i subdue and i have dominion If I don't realize that Jesus is, hallelujah, the second person of the Godhead, Elohim, the God of creation, separation, hallelujah, and the God of designation, then I'll not know that he designated these things for me. And the way that I see Jesus will affect what he can do for me. Do I still see him as the baby in the manger? Do I still see him as just the good teacher, just a prophet, just a good man? Do I still see him nailed on a cross? Do I still see him, hallelujah, as just the one who died for me when I was lost but couldn't get back up again? Do I see him as the God, hallelujah, who was able to win and therefore has designated that I win? He won, so I win, hallelujah. He got up, so I get up. The designation is I'm supposed to subdue, replenish, be fruitful, multiply, and have dominion in my life. That's his designation for me. All this we see right there in the first chapter of the book. And what I love, I love this about God. And he's not just the God of creation. He created me with a purpose. He's not just the God of separation. Amen. This separates right from wrong, good from evil. Open, uh, good from not good. In the prayer, you talked about how there are doors that are opened and doors that should be closed. God has separated the doors that should be open from the doors that should be closed. Because he wants what's best for me. He wants what's blessed for me. So he's the God of creation, separation, and the God of designation. He wants this stuff for me. But what I want you to see finally and ultimately is he's the God of restoration. Mm. Let's go back up to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And here's something that I want you to focus on. It says, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness 
was upon the face of the deep. It says nothing was going right. Nothing was coming into place. Nothing was falling in line. Without form, void, everything looked dark. And the Spirit of God moved. He's the God of restoration. Because we see he set a precedence here right at the beginning of creation when nothing was flowing, nothing was going, everything seemed dark, everything looked bad, everything looked wrong. The Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters and God said let there be light and even though everything was dark even though everything was without form even though everything was void when God said let there be light there was light that lets me know that the God of creation the God of separation the God of designation. When things are not going right, when things are not looking right, he's the God of restoration that can make everything right. Mm. Even if it's my fault, Even if it's my fault, he can still cause a restoration in my life to bring me back to my designation in life, which is to be fruitful, multiply, subdue, hallelujah, and have dominion, hallelujah. He can restore everything in my life. And he'll even take those things that were wrong in my life and make them work out for the good. Mm. I remember daddy being at home. He was washing the dishes, vacuuming the floor, looking like he was in a hurry all the time because he was trying to get to work. Daddy worked for 40 some years in the same place, would often get this bonus that they got if you never missed a day throughout the um, year. Just a hard working man. And he would, I would walk in the house from playing, and the first thing you smell when you come in the house is chili powder. I say, Daddy, what's, what's for dinner? He'd say, chili. But really, it wasn't quite chili, because it's more of a watery, soupy consistency. I call it kitchen soup. And daddy would take, I called it kitchen soup because it seemed like he just took whatever's in the kitchen and put it together. It would be brown ground beef and potatoes and green beans and corn and spaghetti noodles and <laughs> stewed uh, tomatoes. And you would think, what is this? What is this? mess that you got going on in here? But then when you put it in the bowl and you got some crackers, you're like, oh, this is good. He took everything that he found in the kitchen and put it together, and it came out good. The God of restoration takes everything that you've gone through, been through, and are going through, and makes it work together for your good he's the God of restoration so if things look bleak if things look dark if things don't seem to be flowing and going the way that they're supposed to go don't be concerned Elohim is an expert in speaking to those things that are without 
form and void and covered in darkness and causing light to come out of him. Because he's the God of restoration. And the very thing that's plaguing you, bothering you, it was designed to work for you to get you to the point of fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, and have dominion because that's what he designated for you. And nothing that happens to you or even happens because of you can prevent the God of creation, separation, designation, and restoration from blessing you to be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, and have dominion over your life. Pastor Jerry and Shavella Gatson welcome you to attend worship services at the Ornament of Grace Christian Center, 121 Express Drive, Suite C, Lansing, Kansas. Join us every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and Wednesday evening at 6.30 p.m. My Bible says, hallelujah, he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. For more information, call 913-240-6262, the Ornament of Grace Christian Center, where God's grace is sufficient for you.